in any part of the world, the reason why you make an investment is to get a return, right? If you put money somewhere and nothing is happening, even return of peace of mind is zero, then you're not really doing an investment, right? So everybody that is doing an investment that puts money somewhere, they are expecting some kind of return. And for the, for the reason of simplicity, a lot of people put investments to get more return on the money. So if I put a particular amount somewhere, I'm expecting to get a particular amount in return, in addition to my peace of mind, of course. Now, today what we want to talk about is centered around why an investment can be considered superior to another in terms of how much monetary return it provides. And you know, not necessarily giving off. So peace of mind for the sake of this conversation is safety, right? So by not necessarily shedding off any amount of safety, but you're actually making more return than you would have made if you had taken another investment, you know, decision um, that gives you interest. To further break down this point, we want to be using a word frequently that we need to um, define. And let's call that word a vehicle. So what's a vehicle? It's something that takes you from one place to another. So imagine that you want your investments to take you from 100,000, for instance, to 200,000 or to 300,000. So destination A, destination B. What happens in between is that you're going to make, you know, some returns, which will be seeable at the end. But you need something to take you from this point to that point. And then that's what we're now going to refer to as the vehicle. So that vehicle is the kind of investment that you do, right? And there are several types which we're not going to. The main concept that we're trying to explain here is why a particular, you know, vehicle will be better than another vehicle in taking you from point A to point B. The key concept around this our nice story that we're talking about today is compound interest. And I mean, at this point, you would have heard several things about compound interest, that all oh, compound interest is why the rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer, that several people have spoken about compound interest as a secret of creating wealth, etc., and so forth. And then you now start seeing compound interest as one mountain that you can never climb. But it's actually pretty simple. Let's use a mathematical example. For those of us that don't like math, um, is actually not that really is not so complex. We have a phone and we can actually follow through with our calculator. Let's say the guy videoing me now, his name is Goke. He has one million naira and he needs to invest one million naira. Now, he has two options, or in this case, two vehicles. There's a vehicle that compounds interest once a year, and there's a vehicle that compounds interest every quarter. So, in a year, you have four quarters. So, that means every three months is a quarter. To explain what compound interest is, Goki brings his one million and puts it in this vehicle that, you know, compounds interest every year. At a flat rate of, at a per annum rate of 10%, what that would mean is that at the end of the year, Goki's one million will now be one million one hundred thousand at the end of the year. Going into the next year, since that interest will compound, by December 31st, by January 1st, the next year, Goke will now have 1,100,000 naira that he can earn interest on. He started the previous year with only 1 million naira, and the vehicle took him from January to December 31st that year, and then that journey has produced the 100,000 naira. Now, the vehicle is ready to take him from January the following year to December that year, and now he has 1,100,000 naira. So the interest he will earn will be somewhere around maybe 110,000 naira. Right, so that means that at the end of year two, Goke will now have 1,110,000 naira at the same 10% per annum, which is excellent. Goke is making progress. But let's also view this other vehicle that Goke could have used. So that's the basic concept of compound interest. The interest that you earned now joins your capital to also earn more interest. So it's a pyramid scheme, but upside down and the good kind of pyramid scheme. So now let's look at that in the second vehicle scenario where Koki's money compounds every quarter. So at the end of three months, so from January to January, February, March, from January to March, right, um, Goki is going to earn interest. If he has his 1 million, this interest is likely to be 25,000. So that means that at the end of March, Goki has 1 million, 25,000. In this second vehicle, 
the money will now compound at the end of March, so that he's starting April with 1 million 25,000. That's his new capital. And then as Goke goes into Q2, which is the second quarter of the year, Goki can now earn interest on both 1 million and 25,000. And you may think that 25,000 naira interest you earn on 25,000 is not enough or is not much, but it's significant if that happens every single quarter. So going on with the example, by the end of Q2, Goki's 25,000 might have earned, this is probably not mathematically correct, but let's just say he earned 1,000 naira, you know, on the 25,000. And his 1 million also earned him an additional 25,000. So by the time you add everything that Goke has earned at the end of Q2, you find out that Goke has earned maybe 1 million 52,000 or 1 million 53,000 or thereabout. Now he has 1 million 53,000 going into Q3. And that 53,000 that he has earned is going to also get interest. So that keeps happening every quarter. And then by the end of the year, the first vehicle that would have given him just 1 million 100,000, you know, in comparison to this second vehicle, the second vehicle would have probably given him, call it 1 million, maybe 10,000, or maybe 1 million 9,000. 9,000 now doesn't seem like a significant difference until this happens quarter on quarter for 10 years. And then you wake up one day and find out that if Goki had used vehicle one, he would have maybe 1 million or 2 million extra. And if he had used vehicle two, he will have 6, 7 million extra. And that is over 200 or 300% of what he would have done if he was using the first vehicle. So that's really the power of compound interest. For you to access compound interest, you need to have a long-term, you know, mindset. And the good news with compound interest is that there are actually vehicles, real-life vehicles, that you can access to give you compound interest. For example, almost all the mutual funds, almost all the money market mutual funds floated um, by several finance institutions in Nigeria actually have that quarter on quarter, you know, compound interest growth, opposed to putting in a savings account or buying a treasury bill one off for one year, you know. So when people say that they get rich off compound interest, it's not one mystical mountain that you can never climb. It's really just interest that you've earned in a short period adding to your capital and then that's just continuously repeating until 10 years later, 15 years later, you find out that there's really a significant difference from if you had just used a single a yearly compounding vehicle. So if you if you already have interest running, if you already have investments running and then um, you have experienced the beauty of compound interest, you can let us know. We're super excited to hear that. Um, if you haven't yet tried it, you can juxtapose, right? Your current investment that you're doing now, start off a new one that can compound and then see the difference and let us know how that goes.